I'm sure sooner or later the whole world will have democracy. And even if China were to be the last country, democracy will still arrive in China. I'm Martin Lee, former chairman of the bar and a former member of the drafting committee of the basic law for Hong Kong. They were crucial years for Hong Kong's future. Margaret Thatcher went to see Deng Xiaoping late August or early September of 1982. Just half a month before that, um, I led a group of lawyers and other professional people to meet some of the officials from the Hong Kong Macau Affairs Office. The chairman was then Liu Xingji, but he had a, a fall and broke his leg. And so Lei Hao and, and Lo Peng came instead and had a meeting with the seven lawyers in our group. We were completely taken by surprise when Li Hao said, in 1997, the new territories would be given back to China. Our leaders believe that Hong Kong cannot survive without the new territories. So our leaders think that it is an appropriate time, that is the 1st of July, 1997, for Hong Kong and Kowloon and the new territories to be given back to China. What do you think? And at that time, we had no idea at all that something so serious would be raised with us, or only lawyers, and had nothing to do with politics. And we didn't then discuss among ourselves what our line would be. And so I said, uh, if you want Hong Kong to continue to prosper, but Hong Kong will be handed back to China. It's like uh, if you see there's a beautiful flower, a beautiful rose growing in your neighbor's garden and if you pluck it and put it in a very expensive vase in your own home, what would happen to the rose a few days later? Li Hao was very angry. He slammed on the table and he said, why do you have so little confidence in yourself and why do you have so little confidence in the Chinese people? in Hong Kong. Singapore is a Chinese community and it's doing so well. And I said, well, because it is an independent country. If you allow Hong Kong to be independent, you don't need such a statement like Lee Kuan Yew to do it properly for the people there. If Hong Kong could have independence, even a, just a lawyer like me could do a good job. Now, I didn't want the job, but I told him, without independence, it's not possible for Hong Kong to continue to prosper and be stable when the sovereignty of Hong Kong is handed back to China. That was our point. And I didn't know what the rest of my team would think because I was a leader of the group. The deputy leader was Dorothy Liu, Liu Yuji, who was known to be a pro-Beijing lawyer. But in fact, she agreed with me. And so we all spoke with one voice. And of course, it was not a very harmonious discussion at all. We suggested, what about taking back sovereignty on the 1st of July 1997, but then grant a lease to the British for 50 years? But Li Hao said no. He said sovereignty without administration is empty. That was how the meeting ended. That night, Dorothy Liu said, look, we must do something because we cannot allow this to happen. Otherwise, Hong Kong will be completely ruined. I will volunteer to draft a letter so that our thoughts can be put down in writing and be handed to the Chinese leaders to make sure that what we think will not be misrepresented. <laughs>
China wanted very much to take Hong Kong back. And not just Hong Kong, but Taiwan and Macau. And at that time, they were completely accommodating. And the intention was to let Hong Kong people feel comfortable. And I remember assurances were given to us, you don't have to worry. Chinese leaders only want to change two things, the flag and the governor. And everything else will remain the same. Within that framework, the China will resume exercising sovereignty over Hong Kong. Uh, everything is negotiable. Now when I look back, um, it's totally different. Because once they got sovereignty back, they are now talking about the constitution of China trumping the basic law, although they didn't use that word. My assessment at the time was that Deng Xiaoping obviously already decided not to follow Soviet Russia in practicing socialism in China. And obviously, he was already minded to go along the capitalism route, although he never said it. I would think that he must have been looking at Hong Kong, a Chinese community, prospering and stable, with the rule of law and with human rights. And in the early 80s, Deng Xiaoping was already opening up China for overseas investments. I believe Deng Xiaoping's plan of one country, two systems is not just for Taiwan, Hong Kong or Macau, but the whole of China. So we were allowed to continue to practice capitalism and China would take 50 years to catch up. See, otherwise it wouldn't make sense when he had a meeting with the drafting committee of the basic law, I think on the 16th of April, 1987, when I was drafting with the rest. He said if 50 years should prove not to be enough, you can have another 50. I believe he wanted Hong Kong to lead China forward. But unfortunately, his successes did not have the courage or the conviction to pursue Deng Xiaoping's Great China Dream. Chinese communists in Hong Kong didn't want us or anybody to form a political party. And that is because they, there is already a communist party in Hong Kong, which is not official, but it's there. And the British government knew it, but the British government is not going to do anything about it. And of course, the Kuomintang is also here. There's another party. Again, uh, it did not function openly, but we all knew that there were these two parties in Hong Kong. And I remember talking to the British officials here about democracy. And one answer was given all the time was, but, but Mr. Lee, what's the point of introducing democracy for Hong Kong? You guys will win because it's the Communist Party or the KMT, all right? They are, they are so influential in Hong Kong. But my answer to them was, how do you know that we won't win if you don't give us a chance? So we, we didn't call ourselves a party. That's why when we first formed ourselves into a party, it was only called the United Democrats of Hong Kong. Uh, people in Hong Kong were promised by Britain and China.
Chris Patton's proposal for political reform, LND's party made a number of amendments to it, and if the amendments were passed, we would not lose our seat uh, on the handover. I have been asking myself whether I was wrong, if the clock can be set back, would I have acted differently? I don't think we were wrong at all. The other side is wrong. Because the promises of democracy were made by them and written into the basic law. And of course, we have the right to insist that what was promised must be delivered and not just halfway. If I have never gone abroad, overseas, or, or including London, to ask for democracy, Hong Kong would have been given democracy. Look at Macau. And in fact, I will go again. Whenever necessary, I will go. Why shouldn't I go? Who internationalized the Hong Kong issue first? Not me, but China. Because both China and, the, and Great Britain lobbied strongly for overseas support of their joint declaration. It was only a treaty between two governments. And yet, so many other governments came out to support it, including the US government, and the Canadian government, and the European countries, and so on. Why? Because of lobbying from China and Great Britain. And they registered, they kept on they reminding people, even the Chinese government kept on reminding people that joint declaration was registered with the United Nations. Don't worry. So if they internationalize Hong Kong, why can't I tell people in the world what is actually happening in Hong Kong? If I told any lie, let them correct me. I believe that democracy is certainly good, not just for Hong Kong, but in every country. It's a civic right of the people. Whenever you are a person, a human being, you have that right. right. You mean, there's no other system better. So I'm sure sooner or later, the whole world will have democracy. And even if China were to be the last country to have democracy, democracy will still arrive in China. Of course it's difficult. If I were to tell you that, I'm, uh, that it's easy, nobody, uh, I must be mad. A lot of people will say it's impossible. But even if it is impossible, does it mean that we give up? If we give up, it's really, make sure, we make sure it's impossible. But if we keep on fighting, there's, there's always a chance. <laughs>